Welcome to Workshop Skill Modeling. This is part three of the effects of Volvogin B2 Skill 172 build. In part two, I started uh, work on the cockpit. In part three, um, I'm adding the framework to the cockpit, the bomb base, and um, the um, internal uh, airframe. Mo most of this um, is going to be a scratch build at this point. So, um, it's the build starting to get interesting. So let's jump into this. To begin with, I'm prepping the hull for the cockpit. So first of all, I'm having to put in a, a window. So I'm using canopy glue. So it's Formula 560 canopy glue. And as I've said in many other videos, this stuff is primarily designed for canopies. It dries absolutely clear and um, it doesn't give off any fumes. So it won't fog up your canopy. Because the cockpit is going to be half display, half open I should say I'm having to build a framework for it so what I've got here is a 2mm plastic card and I'm just cutting them um, length uh, strips even um, I'm going to be cutting a few of these uh, because I'll be using them throughout the build now that I've got a few uh, strips cut I'm just placing them on a piece of uh, paper just lining them out this is to uh, paint them. Now if I bring up a diagram here you, you'll see that um, the um, airframe that I'm, I'm going to be trying to reproduce. So the, these are going to be the struts that, struts that are running down. So I'm taking a, a piece of tape and I'm just securing the strips to um, the piece of paper. The colour markings that you see on the strips, th those are just from an old uh, bit of plastic card that I was testing colours to see how they would look on a bit of plastic um, so they're perfectly good to use I'm just going to be priming these in white um, so um, all, all the colour markings will disappear anyway so that's them all primed as you can see the, the, the markings have disappeared if uh, you do this uh, just remember when you remove your tape there'll be a part of it that is um, on, on painted or on prime which will have to be addressed don't know whether the camera can pick it up or not, but where I'm pointing is where the tape is. So there's a, a slight colour difference there, obviously. I'm dry fitting the nose area of, of the plane here. I'm only using uh, one half, and um, this is the area where you would normally put in um, all your weight um, to, to weigh the nose down. Obviously, that's not going to be possible for me because I'm having it open, but um, you can see there the um you know that's where it goes the inner part i'm not actually using because again that i'm actually um having it um on display now the kit does come with uh two nose options uh for you to use for a variant a and b so make sure you know which uh, variant you're doing at this stage for the nose cone i'm having to modify it so I've just marked a, a central line and I'm taking my uh, straight saw here and I'm simply going to saw right down the centre to cut it in half. Try and be accurate as possible if you're using this method. Of course you can use a, a Dremel uh, as well to cut it, uh, but just be aware that can burn the plastic, hence why I'm using the hand saw to do. Now it's cut in half and just uh, test it for fit again before I cement it into place. But when I did this, I thought I cut it wrong, but I realised I had picked up the, the wrong half. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't uh, rush to ahead. Pay attention to uh, what, what you're doing. So now time to fit the cockpit capsule in, inside the frame. The location points are well defined on this, and it fits in really nicely. It uh, just butts up against the, the, the hull there. Uh, just make sure that the instrument panel is lined up with the... Um, outer edge of the opening of the cockpit and you shouldn't have any problems. The, the, the seats uh, back up against um, the, the rear of the opening as well so it, you, you shouldn't really have any, any problem but it is essential that you get the, the fit done um, in, the, in the proper position. I'm not going to start adding uh, parts of the airframe so I'm taking the strips of plastic card and um, I, I placed in a little bit of cement inside and I'm just uh, molding the uh, strip into the um, shape of the uh, nose console. 
it, it's very pliable this stuff it's all as I said it's only two two millimeters thick so you can push it down and and hold it into position while it sets so as you can see I've done the uh, ribs in so there's four in total just running down the actual nose cone Next is a couple of support brackets that have to go in. There's uh, two wedge shapes uh, and one half circular shape. So the wedge shapes are easy enough to make. They're just um, a bit of the card um, cut down into an angle. The, um, the circular part, I just use the nose cone for the diameter and throw a circle around it. And then uh, I just uh, done a line halfway up to make the semicircle and then snipped off the excess with my uh, sprue cutters. And once I was done, I just took a file and took off um, all the ex uh, excess to the um, my, my markings that I done to form the circular uh, shape. And once I was done, just simply cut it in half, and you, you, you will then have your basic um, shape that you need for the support uh, structure. I'm now using my pin drive to uh, make the holes in it. The reason why the, there's holes in, in these um, infrastructure parts is because it's there to save weight on, on the aircraft. So most infrastructures will have all these uh, beams and that with um, weight saving holes. Have you have ever wondered why they're there? So just use the pin drive to uh, make a hole, then place my knife inside the hole and twist it around to open it up to a larger area. I've done the same with the wedge shape as well, uh, put in some holes. So you, you can see them there, various uh, size holes as well. Now the wedge shape does have a cross beam uh, on it. So it's a, a simple case of again taking a strip and uh, cementing the wedge shape onto the strip. This also helps it, the, the part to attach to the um, bulkhead of the cockpit. It just gives it more of a surface area to cement to. So we can hold up to the camera, you just see um, the, the, the part ready to go. So um, once it's all dry, I just need to cut this in, in half uh, to have the two beams. Um, as you can see, the, the, the ribs there are, are almost dry now um, for the next stage. So first of all, I'm putting in the wedge shape. So I'm, uh, as I said earlier there, that they go onto the bulkhead where the copy is. Try and put them equal distance apart and um, high enough so that when the ribs get bent over to, to form the frame, the um, wedges will actually touch the um, the, the ribs uh, to make contact with them and add extra support. And then the um, half semicircle uh, bracket thing goes in. Again, this goes right at the, the top, similar to the, the wedges. Uh, once more, this will add more support to the actual belt and the rib. Once everything is dry, it's time to form the ribs. Now, I'm just uh, taking a rib and uh, bending it over onto the uh, fuselage, keeping it in line with the actual bulkhead, trying to get the same circumference but slightly smaller, and uh, just marking off uh, where I should cut the rib. Always make it slightly larger uh, on your cut, uh, because that way you can nibble off any uh, millimeters or whatever if you're um, too, too long. But of course, if you're too short, you would have to replace the whole thing. So as a wise idea, just to cut off a little bit less than more. Now once I've got my length, there's just a, a simple case of adding a little bit of cement up where the contact point's going to be and bending it in. If it is, if you do find it is too long by a millimetre or something, just simply take it off and uh, snip a tiny little bit off or file it down. Um, but, um, if it is too short, as I said, you, you would have to replace the whole thing. Make sure it's in position and um, try and get it to touch the two wedges that you put in as well so that will secure the actual rib. So I'm carrying on with the same process all the way down to the nose cone and, until the last one. For the cross support beam, it is uh, quite simple. It's just uh, one uh, straight piece of uh, plastic art um, fitted over the ribs. Now I positioned this where the um, contact points would be on the bulkheads for the opposite uh, side of the fuselage, uh, the, the part that I'm not putting on. So it just fits in there nicely and just bend it to the contours of your um, rib line. 
So while I'm waiting for the um, red line to dry, I'm moving on to the bottom part of the cockpit. And uh, this is the arch access hatch. So first of all, there is a, a clear part that goes in at, at the bottom there. Again, that's held with some canopy glue. And once it was dried, uh, just uh, a matter of fitting it into the um, fuselage. It's a really nice fit. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problem with it. I'm just taking extra care uh, placing it in also because I haven't, I'm not uh, putting the other half of the fuselage on. I was thinking about cutting this part in half like I did the rose cone, but I decided um, in order for the infrastructure to be a little bit more stable, I decided to leave it uh, whole. Back to the cockpit, and I'm painting the frame in Rebel Aquacolor 99 Aluminium. Now, I was thinking about just leaving this white or painting it uh, gloss white, but um, I, ha I tried it and it sort of looked like just um, what it is, is uh, some plastic being uh, added on to the um, uh, cockpit. It just didn't look um, uh, right to me. So, uh, I've decided uh, to give it the metal look. Now, I believe that the frame originally on the actual aircraft is white um, but for the, for the sake of the model it, I, I think a bit of colour uh, is better. I've left it to dry overnight and uh, you can see the uh, uh, aluminum embedded in now. I think it is better than the white. However, I am going to be using Tamiya's Weathering Master C and the Orange Rust component uh, to weather it. This just gives it um, a, a more of a metallic look and your look. So I'm using my brush sharpener um, on the pigment and just rubbing it over onto the ribs. But I think this is a good place to end part three. In part four I'll be uh, starting on the bomb base and um, making some more infrastructure for the actual main airframe. If you haven't done so already why don't you check out the channel uh, for my other builds and of course the um, other parts to this build. If you subscribe to the channel, you, you'll get uh, notified of all the updates. Hit that like button and of course, leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.